Look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor you're looking good. Better than yesterday. And today. You are celebrated. You are honored. You're going places. Tomorrow. You will be unbeatable. You will be unstoppable. You'll rise to great heights. This is your portion. And there is nothing the devil can do about it. In Jesus' name. You believe that? Yeah, you better give God a big hand. The month of January is not the month of January. Hello. It's a good month. That's why you are here. And it's a month we've been casting vision um, so that you can catch it. Vision is not taught, vision is caught. Amen? And I pray that as we have unveiled it, you're beginning to grasp it. You may not fully understand it, but you're beginning to catch it. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 2 and 3, let me read that again. We're talking about vision. And vision will take you very far. For the vision, verse 2, and then 3. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end it shall speak. This vision shall speak. It will not lie. Though it tarry, Wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Now verse 4, which is now part of the vision and the theme for this year. See, the enemy is puffed up, his desires are not upright, but the righteous person will live by his faithfulness. Or, like it says in other verses, the just shall live by faith. This faith is a force. It is a power that if you can grasp it, it will take you places. It is a vehicle that moves you from one place to another. It is fuel that fuels your ambitions and your purposes and it takes you to the next level. 2019, you're going places. 2019, you're standing out. 2019, you shall not be denied in the name of Jesus. The Lord is with you. And so, the vision has been written down. Hallelujah. And I still pray that you will get a copy, you will read it. One of the things that we have put in this book is study questions. On page 126 of this book, you can get questions for each month that help you at your own personal level to begin to read the verses and to grasp what this faith is all about every month. We have also put it in a card. It's called the 12 faith incre the 12 ever increasing faith affirmations for a victorious year with a theme passage Hebrews 11 1 to 16 with a verse Luke 17 5 to 6 12 statements of ever increasing faith some of you have this card and there are times sometimes when you read it it is like you're reading it for somebody else, but you can personalize it. And like number one, it says this. When I personalize it, it says, my ever-increasing faith 
will multiply as I activate the word of God daily. I will arise and shine. Number two, it says, my ever-increasing faith strengthens and enables me to fight and win spiritual battles. I will arise and triumph. Three, my ever-increasing faith produces the God kind of fruit and blessings in me because I believe and I act on God's word. I will arise and abide in the vine. And you can go on and on. By the time you are reaching number 12, you are excited. Hallelujah. I read it. Try to read it every day because I walk with it. And so you can get a copy. Uh, tell your neighbor it's Bamba 50. Hallelujah. <laughs> and then you can read it or buy it and give it to your friends. We are using all these means, including the Wednesday service, including the Sunday service, to cast this vision because it is going to move mountains. Luke 17, verse 5, the disciples asked a question. And the Bible says, the apostles say to the Lord, increase our faith. And for sure, anybody would want their faith increased. But Jesus, instead of increasing their faith, gave them the process of increasing their faith. He said in verse 6, um, he replied, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, and like I usually say, the emphasis is not how small it is. The emphasis is it is a seed. Hallelujah. If you have faith, as a seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted. You can say to it, be uprooted and be planted in the sea. And this mulberry tree, even though it does not have ears the way you have them, it will hear and it will obey you. It will not obey God. It will obey your voice. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, my voice will be obeyed. Amen? To increase your faith is to use what you have and activate it. Amen? Faith without works is what? Is dead. In other words, it is not operational. So activate it. A car without a key for ignition stays the way it is. In fact, you can leave your car the whole day and it will not move until you enter that car and turn it on. <clears throat> I want you to know that your faith is about to be turned on. It's going to cause you to move. Last couple of Wednesdays, we've been talking about this faith. We've said that this faith brings results in the now. This faith is noticed in the now. This faith is constant. It is continual. This faith speaks. It says things. This faith believes now. This faith asks now. This faith receives now. Let me finish with that last part. Then I'll tell you what I am saying today, Mark eleven twenty four. talks about receiving what you ask. Tell your neighbor, when you ask, receive. Now, don't postpone your receiving because many people ask and then they, they postpone their receiving. Receive it the moment you are asking. All right? Mark eleven twenty four. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. Believe it. Receive it. Picking from there, today, 
I want to talk about ever increasing faith is a choice. Tell your neighbor, you have a choice. Hallelujah. And let me tell you this. You may be stuck in a very challenging situation, not because God has desired it, but because you have done what? Chosen to be there. Choice is your most powerful gift that God has given you. I repeat, choice is your most powerful gift. And ever increasing faith is what? Is a choice. And I'll be talking about this even as we still cast the vision. Let me read Deuteronomy 30. 8 to 20. Those are great verses. The Bible says this, Deuteronomy 38. In fact, this chapter is quoted by Jesus many times in the New Testament. And the other apostles also quote it. <clears throat> so it says this, <clears throat> verse 8. You will again obey the Lord and follow his commands I'm giving you today. By the way, the word obey, you can actually use the word choice. You shall choose. Because obedience is about choosing. You will again choose the Lord and follow his commands I'm giving you today. Then the Lord your God will make you. He will make you. When you choose, he will make you. I am saying he will make you. Most prosperous. In some of your work, in all the work of your hands, and in the fruit of your womb, the young of your livestock, and the crops of your land, the Lord will again delight in you and make you prosperous, just as he delighted in your ancestors. If you choose the Lord your God, and choose his commands and decrees that are written in this book of the law. And turn to the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Now what I am commanding you today is not too difficult for you. Tell your neighbor, it is easy. Amen. You know, some people think the Christian life is so hard. No, it is only hard because of the choices you make. Hello. Now what I'm commanding you today is not too difficult for you or beyond your reach. Look at the next verse. It is not up in heaven so that you have to ask who will ascend into heaven to get it and proclaim it to us so we may obey it. Nor is it beyond the sea so that you have to ask who will cross the sea to get it and proclaim it to us so we may obey it. It goes on to say, the next verse, no, the word is where? So tell your neighbor, so easy. So near. See, this word is very near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. So you may choose it. Now, this verse is quoted by Paul. So let me not finish this. I'll come back to this. I want to show you it to you in the New Testament. Romans chapter 10, verse 8. But what does it say? The word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the message concerning faith that we proclaim. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be what? You'll be saved. This, this word is near you. All right? So back, Deuteronomy 30, verse 15, so that I finish that passage. See, I set before you today life and prosperity, death and destruction. For I command you today to love the Lord your God, 
to walk in obedience to him and to keep his commands, decrees and laws, then you will live and increase. You will live and increase. I'm saying you will live and increase. And the Lord your God will bless you in the land you are entering to possess. But if your heart turns away and you are not obedient, or you don't make the right choice, and if you're drawn away to bow down to other gods and worship them, guess what? I declare to you this day that you will certainly be destroyed. You will not live long in the land you are crossing the, the Jordan to enter and possess. Then this is a good verse. This day I call the heavens and the earth as witnesses against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. And then he says something amazing. Now, choose life. He didn't say, choose life or death. He said, choose life so that you and your children may live. Now look at verse 20. And that you may love the Lord your God, listen to his voice, and hold fast to him. For the Lord is your life. I'm saying the Lord is your life. And he will give you a few years in the land. How many are receiving that? Take it in Jesus' name. May you live to be 120. Hello. For the Lord is your life. And he can decide to keep that life for many years. And he will give you many years in the land he sought to give to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The pinpoint thing here is choose. Amen? So let, let me give you the four points I want you to remember. Faith, ever increasing faith is a choice. It is a choice to believe God. This faith is a choice to change location. This faith is a choice to move forward. It is a choice to take hold of. Let me start with the one, believe. It is a choice to believe God and to believe his word. Let me tell you this. <clears throat> God wants to be believed. I'm saying God wants to be believed. Believe God. And how does he reveal himself? Through his, his word. Believe his word. Choose, choose, choose. One of the interesting scriptures in Deuteronomy, before that verse 30, uh, chapter 30, is there are so many verses where God says, I will choose, 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 I will choose. Then in chapter 30 says, now you do what? Choose. One of the reasons that faith does not work for many people is they are still waiting for God to do what? To choose for them. For example, there are people who are still waiting for God to choose for them who they will marry. <laughs> You're waiting on God to choose who you will marry. Let me tell you this. God will not do it. Because it is not God who will be asked, do you take this lady <laughs> to be a lawful wedding? It is not God who will be asked. Hallelujah. <laughs> I really want to hammer this thing about choice because some of us are already stuck. Not because God has not chosen for you, but you, the one who has not chosen. Let me read for you these verses. Deuteronomy 16, let me just, just, just for, your, for your sake. Deuteronomy 16, let me read verse 2. Listen to verse 2. It says, Sacrifice as the Passover to the Lord your God, an animal from your flock or herd, at the place the Lord will, the Lord will, the Lord will choose. Go to verse 6. Verse 6 says this, 
except in the place he will choose as a dwelling place for his name. There you must sacrifice the Passover in the evening when the sun goes down on the anniversary of a departure from Egypt. God will choose. Verse, verse 7. That's the verse. Roast it and eat it at the place the Lord your God will, will choose. Verse 11. 16.11 And rejoice before the Lord your God at the place he will, he will choose. Verse 15. For seven days, celebrate the festival to the Lord your God at the place the Lord will do what? Will choose. He will choose. 16. Observe the month of Aviv and celebrate the Passover of the Lord your God because in the month of Aviv, he brought you out of Egypt by, by night. Hmm? Chapter 17. Let me read 17. Deuteronomy 17.10. 17.10. 17, you must act according to the decisions they give you at the place the Lord will. We'll choose, we'll choose, we'll choose, we'll choose. Then 30, verse 19, he ends up on saying, I've been doing all the choosing. Now, chapter 30, verse 19, he says, This day I call the heavens and the earth as witnesses against you that I have set before you life and death blessing and curses, now choose life. And let me tell you this, faith, this ever-increasing faith is a choice to believe God. Amen? Let me read John chapter 6, verse 28 and 29. Then they asked him, what must we do to do the works God requires? Jesus answered, the work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. That is, let me go back to verse 28. Because the disciple says, hey, you just tell us, what does God want us to do? We will do it. What must we do to do the works God requires? Verse 29, Jesus answered, the work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. Tell your neighbor, believe. And tell your neighbor, it is a choice. You see, there was a guy, the two guys on the cross. They had the front seat to eternity. Hallelujah. The main feature was right in the midst of them. His name was Jesus Christ. One of them said, if you are the son of God, get us off this place. The other guy who was a thief, hello, told him, don't you know who this is? This, is, this person is innocent. See, see, ni wa easy. Hello? Because, by the way, they had been on that cross for nearly six hours. It's like seven in the morning, eight, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, one o'clock. So in those six hours, they were in a church service listening to the word. It was one of their hardest services. Because staying on that cross was not easy. Number one, you're hanging with your hands up. The nails are through your feet. And you cannot breathe. Every time you're lifting your breath. <sighs> then you're trying to talk. <sighs> trying to talk. While they're resting, they're hearing the conversation between the multitude and Jesus. They're listening to that conversation through their pain, through all kinds of crazy things. In those six hours, one of them said, by the way, I had somebody saying that you're the son of God. If you're the son of God, get us from here. Uh, and that's the time he was just uh, momentarily having breathed in. <laughs> I mean, let me tell you this. Front seat to the movie of eternity. 
They were not going to get out of that cross. They were going to die there. And the main feature was Jesus. One of them said, get us off here. This is too bad. In fact, you are to blame for us being here. And then one of them got a revelation. Because right on top of the cross was written, this is the king of the Jews. For six hours he had been seeing that thing. And as he listened, he realized this is not an ordinary man. And he asked him something. No debate. He just said, remember me. When you come into your kingdom. He knew by making those statements, not only is Jesus going to die, he's going to do what? To rise again. How he got that revelation, I don't know. Jesus immediately responded. By the way, if it was me, I would have told him, have you ever been to Sunday school? Huh? When were you baptized? Do you tithe? You know, asking questions that are totally irrelevant at that particular moment. Jesus responded to him and he said, Today, you shall be with me in paradise. One guy went to hell by choice. The other one went to paradise by choice. Jesus did not choose for them. As I discern you, I discern your hell bound. And you, I see heaven. Let me tell you this. You will end up in hell because you made a choice. You will end up in heaven because you made a choice. Choose you this day. Choose life that you may live the power of a choice. Hello? Choose to believe. Two guys, one in hell, one in heaven. Jesus did not make a choice for them. They decided to choose because of the revelation. They believed the word of God. The person who was in the middle is the one the Bible says in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. Somebody chose to believe the word. Ladies and gentlemen, believe the word. Amen? Amen? Believe God. Believe that 2019 is the best year of your life. Believe that this month of January, God will open doors for you. Please, don't wait for August. You need doors to open for you in January. Believe it. Believe it. As you believe, God will open those doors. The brothers of Jesus made their own choices. John chapter 7, verse 5, if you can just get this. These guys were so much in proximity with Jesus, but they didn't, they didn't believe him. It says, for even his own brothers did not believe in him. In fact, the disciples really had problems believing in Jesus. Mark chapter 16, when Jesus had died, rose from the dead. Look at that story. It's an interesting story. Mark 16, around verse 10, the Bible says this. She went and told those who had been with him and who were mourning and weeping, she went to tell them Jesus was alive. Look at verse 11. When they heard that Jesus was alive and that she had seen him, hello, now, go back, because this is Mary Magdalene, just go back to verse, around verse 5. And find these guys who had been with Jesus could not believe. It says, as they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the, si on the right side, and they were alarmed. 
Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. You see, they needed to believe that word. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. Keep going. But go tell his disciples and Peter. Now, I like that statement. Go tell his disciples and Peter. Why do you think he added Peter? Peter had denied him three times. So he said, go tell him and Peter. Do, do you think Peter would think that is good news? No. For him it was the worst <laughs> news. It's like somebody, you owe so much money and then you hear they have died. The reason why you attend their funeral is to make sure that they died. Hello? <laughs> and if they're being buried at Langata, you also go there to make sure this guy is not coming back. When the soil is put out there, you say, <sighs> So when Peter had, at this guy is risen, ah, uh ah, -uh, no, no. Um, and then Jesus said, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. The earliest manuscripts, of course, add a few couple of things. Some of the ancient witnesses do not have the verses that are following. But they're in the Bible, so look at those verses. Next verse. When Jesus rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had driven seven demons. She went and told those who had been with him and were mourning and weeping. When they heard that Jesus was alive and that she had seen him, they did not believe it. Afterward, Jesus appeared in a different form to two of them while they were walking in the country. These ones returned and reported it to the rest, but they did not believe them either. Later, Jesus appeared to the eleven as they were eating. He rebuked them for their lack of what? Of faith. And their stubborn refusal to believe those who had seen him after he'd risen. Now remember, he's in now in their midst. They can see him. He said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. I love Jesus. That even though they completely refuse to believe him, he still tells them, Go and do what? And preach this gospel. But the disciples found it very difficult to believe. Now you think these guys uh, are crazy. But let me tell you this. How many times do we ourselves refuse to believe God? So I'm telling you that you're going to have a breakthrough. I want you to believe me. I'm saying you're going to have a breakthrough. In January... You must believe that. Oh, but Ambrose, where does it say that? It says it in many places. Imagine one day you're just perusing one of your books, just lazily. And then suddenly, on one of the pages, a check falls out. It is a check written in your name for 500,000 shillings. You look down at the name and you found it is a very close friend of yours who happened to go abroad and he had visited recently, and without you knowing, he had slipped a check in your book when he saw you reading it. Hello. <laughs> and he went back to the U.S. And at that particular point when you have seen the check, you are seriously in dire need. It falls out, you look at it, and the first thing you do, he says, uh -uh. This is a mistake. <laughs> Hello? 
In fact, you walk around with that check for two weeks, hoping that your friend can call you and say, did you find a check in your book? I, it was written by mistake. That's what you're waiting for. But in two weeks, he doesn't call. You are still in dire need. Hello? You decide to WhatsApp him. And he says, instead of you telling him directly, you go around the story. <laughs> you're so much in need, but what you are doing is this. You don't believe that check is yours. Amen? You don't believe. Of course, he whatsapps you back and he says, ah, you found it at last. He says, it is yours. But you have been walking around with it for two weeks. But still you don't believe. So you go to the bank. You hope it is not a forgery, so, but you're, so, you're, you're giving it with fear and trembling. And you bank it and you wait for a few days. Then you go to your ATM and you check the balance. The balance is 500,100 shillings. You say, wow. You are so much in need, but you are still not sure. So you hit your pin number, ping, 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 and you withdraw a hundred bob. <laughs> and your hundred bob comes out. Hello? Then you check the balance. And you find it is 500,000. That's when you say, by the way, <laughs> this could actually be true. That's exactly what we do with the word of God. Hello? And for days and days, God says things you don't believe it. He says this is yours. You say no. And what Pastor Ambrose is trying to do is to raise your belief level. I have tried this book. It works. Hello? It works. I have taken months just writing this book. Of course, this book, I wrote it in uh, actually less than a month, and then it was being edited and things like that. So that what I've written, you may read and find a witness from another person that what God says he will do. And if he can do it for me, he will do it for you. So, take a moment, ask your neighbor, if you are that guy, what would you do? The day the check fell out of your book, Hello. This is a conversation I'd like you to have in the days to come. But there are some people here. They say, Allah, that guy is a foolish man. Me. <laughs> that same day. Huh? I would withdraw that money. And not 100 bob. 500,000 and 100 shillings. All of it. <laughs> And for sure, you'd get it. Let me tell you this. God is not a man that he should lie. He's not a son of man that he should change his mind. Of course, for some, sometimes he, his promises tarry. 
but they will come to pass. Those days you are told that if you cash in a check and you have to wait for two weeks for it to clear, people would wait. Hello? So when God tells you cash it in, but wait, it is coming to pass. Have the ability to do what? To wait. But God is waiting for you to believe, believe, believe. Choose to believe God. I hope you've been encouraged. Let me give you the next point very quickly. Ever-increasing faith <clears throat> is a choice to change location. And how do you do that? By believing his thoughts. Let me read Isaiah 55. His thoughts will locate you. Isaiah 55, verse 7 to 12. It says, come, verse, verse 7, sorry. It says, let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on them. And to our God, for he will freely pardon. Look at the next verse. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. Now when we read this verse, just take it back there. People usually read their own things into that verse. They say, you see, you cannot know what God is thinking. His thoughts are not our thoughts. Uh, neither are our ways his ways. Uh, we cannot reach God. Look at the next verse. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. And that's what you're saying. You see, we cannot reach heaven. Remember that verse we said, you don't have to go to heaven. And you don't have to go to the sea. The word is in your mouth. Then it gives you an illustration. It says, as the rain which is in heaven, hello, and the snow, they come where? Down from heaven. And they do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater, verse 11, so is my word that goes out from my mouth. You don't have to go to heaven. God has already sent his word to us. The word is here. When you start thinking the way God thinks, I'm telling you, your faith will relocate you. Hello? It will relocate you. It will move you to the next level. Some of us have thoughts that just need to be chucked out of your system because they have, they have, they have taken too much space. Hello? Have you ever tried taking pictures, pictures, and then it tells you that there are certain pictures that cannot go in? Your store is what? It's full. So what must you do? Now, I'm telling you now in Jesus' name. Delete some of those thoughts. <laughs> so that you can get space for God to inject his thoughts. His word. You see, his word is his thoughts. Hmm? Otherwise, your thoughts and the wicked thoughts the enemy has put in your system, the, def the thoughts of being defeated can get out. Your worry thoughts can go out of your system. Look, look at this verse, Philippians 4.8. Philippians 4.8 says this, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is what? True, these are the things you need to download in your system. Actually, verse 6 says, if you go to verse 6, it says, But do not be anxious about, tell your neighbor, underline the word anything. By the way, some of you are sitting here. Are you being, is something making you anxious? Now, do that verse. Do not be about why? In every situation. By what? Prayer and what? And what? Do what? And then what will happen? Verse 7. Which does what? Will do what? 
Now let me read this in the Amplified Version. Somebody needs this thought. Verse 6, and then I'll come to verse 8. Verse 6, do not be anxious or worried about anything, but in everything, every circumstance and situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, continue to make your specific requests known to God. And the peace of God, that peace which reassures the heart, that peace which transcends all understanding, that peace which stands guard over your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus is what? Is yours. Verse 8 then goes on to say, finally believers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable and worthy of what? Of respect. Whatever is right and confirmed by God's word. Whatever is pure and wholesome. Whatever is lovely and brings peace. Whatever is and of good, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, do what? Think how many times? On these things, center your mind on them and implant them in your heart. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, think. Tell your neighbor, think. Tell your neighbor, it is not easy to think, but start thinking. <laughs> think God's thoughts. And that's why when you hear me make statements like this, that tomorrow you'll be unstoppable. I want you to, in, to download it in your system and, and begin to say, Pastor said, I will be unstoppable. You go out and somebody says, you cannot enter here. And you tell them, Pastor said, I will be unstoppable. <laughs> Hello? Because when you say it, something begins to jack in your system. Begins to rise. What Ambrose said no longer is now Ambrose says, now it is yours. Whatever belonged to Jesus now is yours. Hallelujah. Think thoughts of God. Proverbs 23, 7. Let me read it in the Amplified Version. Proverbs 23, 7. For as he thinks in his heart, so is he in behavior and one who manipulates. He says to you, eat and drink, yet his heart is not with you, but it is begrudging the cost. What he's saying here is, you are what you think. So tell your neighbor, I'm about to change my thinking. How do you do that? You do it by what? By injecting whose thoughts in your system. So find out what God says about you. And just believe it. And then begin to think it continually. And before you know it, ever-increasing faith will begin to bubble in your system because you have made a choice to think in a new way. 2019, stop thinking the way you thought last year. Last year you thought, Nothing works for you. This year, begin to think everything works for you. Amen. Did you know that you choose how you feel every day? God never chooses for you. If you wake up in the morning and you drag yourself and you say, today, if a car doesn't hit me, I will not know what happened. How do you wake up with thoughts like that, that a cow will hit you? How do you say, I am so happy, I could just die? <laughs> we want you to live. Hmm? Don't say things like this, your joke is killing me. My friend, we want you to live. <laughs> Just say, your joke is giving me life. <laughs> you know, we are used to think in dark things. And it is a habit. And those things just pop out of our, our mouths. 
We wake up and you say, I don't think my life will change today. Your life will change. Decree it and say it. Hallelujah. You can choose how you feel. And somebody tells you, stop smiling. It will not last. Tell them it will last and I will make sure it lasts. See, don't be happy, 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 happy. You know, there are some days you have to be happy and the other days you have to be sad. Who told you my choice is this? I am not going to be sad. I'm going to be happy. And God begins to back your happiness. He begins to back your joy. You're going to get a, an increment. Don't, don't, don't start saying, oh, last year, me, I'm going to leave this job. By the way, you know, we never even got a Christmas bonus. I'm leaving. <laughs> How do you know that your employer was actually planning to give you your bonus plus a 50% increase in February? Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, your thoughts will locate you. So, choose to think the way God thinks. Am I making sense? So, choose. Sometimes it is choosing small steps. Just small steps. And those small steps will take you a great distance. <clears throat> You don't have to tithe 50% of your salary. Sometimes you can just begin by giving 1% because it is a step. Hello? Then one day you'll give 5%. Another day you'll give 6%. And God will bless you until you now come to the normal level of 10%. <laughs> Then now you can call it a tithe. It's not a tithe of a tithe. You know, it is. <laughs> and don't make crazy resolutions. God, <laughs> this year when I get a job, Jehovah God, my first salary, I am giving out all to you. And God says, Really? And you say, yes. And God says, let us see. <laughs> he gives you a job. Hey, you get your first salary. 90K. You look at the 90K, you remember what you said. <laughs> you start reasoning and saying, uh -uh, for this month, I'm going to be an artist. There is no God. Or you tell God, God, listen. You understand me. <laughs> so, <laughs> let's make a deal. See, next month I'm, getting, I'm getting 90,000. Now, this month, let me just sort myself out. Next month, <laughs> I mean, Next month comes, needs pile up. Your friends find out you have a job. Your girlfriend finds out she, you have a job. Now you have to start impressing, taking people for dates, things like that. Before you know it, you moved from your 10 by 10, you have engineered an SQ. Hallelujah. Things are working out. And before you know it, you're spending this, this and that. And second month, you're telling God, God, listen. By the way, God, increase my faith. <laughs> now, God is in heaven. You know, him is not disturbed. Him, he knows that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. He doesn't need your tithe. He is in charge. He knows you are the one who needs the tithe because give and it shall be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together.
Third month, your relatives are at your door. Mom-in-law showed up. Hello? Third month. That is 90K, 90K, 90K. God has given you nearly 90 times 3 is what? Nearly 200? Yes. And he has been doing that faithfully. You tell God, now the month of April. Now listen, God. In January, I was joking. <laughs> right off this debt, <laughs> April, I am a new creation. I'm a brand new person. In fact, I'm going to church. When the pastor calls for dedication, I'll be the first one. Please, do not stress yourself. Hallelujah. God is not financed by your tithes and offerings. Hallelujah. But God says, change your thoughts. It is your thoughts that are really giving you problems. Change your thoughts and God will relocate you. Hallelujah. Start small. Tell your neighbor, don't vow things you're not planning to do. Because let me tell you this, God will come to collect. Hello? And if you don't give him, he'll collect in other ways. Hello? You don't want God collecting. God is a giver, not a collector. We're talking about thoughts. I just talked about thoughts of money, but there are thoughts of other things. Think well about yourself. So look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, do you see me? I am the best. Hallelujah. How did that feel? You see, you cannot love anybody if you don't love. Love your neighbor. The reason why people are very upset with their neighbors is because they don't love themselves. In fact, they don't love some people how they eat. They eat too loudly. The problem is not them. <laughs> the problem is that there's something in them they don't like. Let me tell you this, you're the best. I'm saying you're the best. Begin to believe it and begin to say it. You're the best five feet four inches. You're the best. You don't have to be six foot eight. You're the best. Believe it. But it is a choice to believe it. Believe God. Think his thoughts, they will locate you. But let me give you this third point, and then the other one we will talk about it another day. Ever increasing faith is a choice to move forward into his possibilities. You know, right now in the US, what season is it? It's winter. We are experiencing what? Summer, we, of course, we are near the equator, and so we are we're a happy lot. I love Kenya. Hello? In the U.S., the southern states are the ones that are warm, especially like the state of Florida, where there's down south, California, parts of it. Now, when winter comes, some people make choices to go where? To go south. It's a choice. They enjoy the south. And when the winter has gone, they go back. They make choices where they want to be. Did you know in this world, there are two locations? The land of impossibilities and the land of possibilities. Did you know that you can choose to live in the land of possibilities? I 
I want you 2019 to be located in the land of possibilities. Faith, which is a choice, will move you forward into possibilities. Luke 9, 23. Not Luke, Mark 9, 23. The Bible says this. Mark 9, 23. If you can, said Jesus, everything is possible for one who does what? Who believes. Do you know why? Everything is possible. Let me give you another story and then from the Bible and then I'll give you another verse and then we'll tie it up in the next two, three minutes. Luke chapter 9, chapter 1. A young woman is visited by an, by an angel. Her name is Mary. <clears throat> Verse 30, they're having this conversation. The Bible says, chapter 1, chapter 1, Luke 1. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. Let me tell you this. When you have favor, you are in the land of possibilities. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. By the way, he will be great. And that's why sometimes when you are preparing to have children, declare that those children will be great. A mother who is pregnant, walking around, uh, hello, say, my son will be great in the land. My daughter will be great. But if you keep saying, why? I wish I never had this child. One day, that child, this, those vibes will go into the system. And that child will know, my mother never wanted me. You pass that information to this little baby, it goes into the system, and this child is always having problems. You're, a, you have a rebellious kid. And you wonder, he rebellion you talk happy. Nadani ni babayake. Whom it is you who kept saying, I don't want this child. Or, you know how in family planning, you have these accidental children. Hello. Why are you looking at me as if I'm not talking, I'm making sense. I'm not making sense. <laughs> so the husband is, 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 is upset that the wife has just gotten pregnant. The wife is upset because she was not expecting to become pregnant. And the problem is not God's problem. Hello? These two people. <laughs> it's an accident. So every day you're saying, we didn't expect this child. Oh, you should, you should have protected yourself. Oh, this and that. All kinds of crazy things. Let me tell you this. Children are a gift. From God. The fact that you conceived is a miracle. There are people who wait to conceive, they never conceive. They go to doctors, they don't conceive. You, you just conceived. <laughs> and the way you have four of them, and this one will call me Maliza, your story. And then suddenly, somebody has just decided <laughs> to show up. You are upset with this person. Hmm? Declare, no matter what stage they came, this child shall be great. They look like an accident, but in God's bigger plan, they may just end up being the president. Hallelujah. He will be great. Let me finish. I'm sorry I went into that story. He will be great. <laughs> And will be called the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne. Can you imagine? He will give him the throne of his father, David. And he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. Can you imagine the angel is saying this? And then she, Mary says, how will this be? Mary asked, and we're always asking how, how. In this year of ever-increasing faith, God will handle the how. You just walk in the land of possibilities. 
How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. The Bible says the angel answered the Holy Spirit. God had already seen this ahead of time. The Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, by the way, your relative is going to have a child in her old age. She's now walking in the land of possibilities. And she who was said to be unable to conceive in the land of impossibilities, now it is possible. People thought you could not get your degree. You will get your degree. Look at the next verse. For no word from God will ever fail. That word takes you into the land of possibilities. Let me read that in the Amplified Version, 37. It says this. For with God, nothing is or ever shall be impossible. I like what Mary, how she responded. Verse 38. Then Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. She walked out of the land of impossibilities into the land of possibilities. I want to declare to you, start walking in the land of possibilities. Relocate from the winter zone. And enter, enter into your summer. You have heard me tell you this story of this woman who had never seen the sun rise. Why? Because a big hill was on her side of the bedroom big hill. So every day, by the time Anauna San Nisaine, hello, one day she read this verse that says, your faith can move mountains. Hey! <laughs> she walked out of that house and said, I have just read, she was, she's carrying her Bible, I have just read that faith moves mountains. <clears throat> he looked, she looked at the mountain and said, mountain, move. I want to see the sunrise. It never moved. She went home and slept. Next day she wakes up. Mountain, move. The neighbor said, how sure are you? She says, my Bible says that my faith will move mountains. I'm going to see the sun rise. Every day she spoke with that mountain. Until now all the neighbors would look at, at her and they would tell each other, around my six apple. <laughs> she was like the, the one who wakes people up in the morning. Mountain, move. Every day, she spoke to the mountain. I will see the sunrise. Somebody said, listen, if you want to see the sunrise, there's something you can do. Move your house. Just move your house. Ladies, listen, when you walk into the region of possibilities, God works for you. Yes. This woman spoke and spoke until the neighbor said, there is a place called Madare, where you take mentally disturbed people. Somebody even asked, by the way, who is her pastor? They say she goes to another church in Westlands. It is called Parklands Baptist Church. That pastor, something is wrong with his head. This woman spoke, 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 spoke one day. And she didn't know. The government was planning for a road to pass her area. And the bulldozers showed up. The, 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 the soil moving machines came. And they cut the mountain. The part they cut and moved it to put a road is the side of her window when the sun rose that morning. She woke up and she saw the sunrise. And she did not pay a penny. Her prayer caused an entire government to move her mountain. 
your faith is going to cause things to move in the name of Jesus Christ. That Sunday, all the neighbors went to her church. I am saying you're going to have a testimony in Jesus' name. You're going to have a testimony. Oh, it may tarry, but you have made a choice to believe God. You've made a choice to think like God. You've made a choice to walk in the land of possibilities. Currently, what is impossible? Don't stay there. Begin to walk into the land of possibility. Don't start saying, I can't, it won't, it shall not. Start saying, it will. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Yes, I've been denied a visa five times. But guess what? The number line has not been finished. There is a number six after number five. Hello? There is a number seven out of, after, after number six, six. Keep going. Because let me tell you this. That whatever government is will say, this person, we have eaten a lot of his money. Let's sort this thing out. There's a lady who told me to say this. This is her testimony. She had wanted to go to Canada and she tried, tried, tried. It was not happening. Then her daughter went to Canada and now she had more reason to go because her daughter is there. But the Canadians were not giving her a visa. Then she actually went for a visa interview and they questioned her and questioned her and questioned her until she felt this thing called Canada can stay. <laughs> you know how you reach that stage? <laughs> stay. But she still, she answered this question, then she's asked that one, she answers it, she answers it, then they finalized that interview and they said, you can wait. She waited. Week one, it went. Week two, it went. And you know when you're waiting for something so much, the days go in slow motion. Hello? It's just like, ah, ah, ah. two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. Five weeks, six weeks, seven weeks, eight weeks. Mountain, you have to move. She comes here and she hears Pastor saying, it, you will make it, it will happen. She's saying now, these things that Pastor is saying, I don't think will happen. Ninth week, they called her. They said, your visa has been approved. They gave her a seven-year visa. Now, how do you think she felt? Now you can go to Canada anytime. Ding, 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 ding. For seven years. Not for two days. Let me tell you this. Your mountain is about to split open. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, I'm going to see the sunrise. See the sunrise. Tell your other neighbor who is not very happy about you that you will see the sunrise. <laughs> Talk to the one who is behind you who is envious and tell them, I will see the sunrise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Tell the one in front of you who is ignoring you, I will see. The sunrise. <laughs> and tell them I will have a testimony. <laughs> have you nitted anything today? Yes. Come on, stand on your feet and let's give God a big hand and tell him thank you. <laughs> let's appreciate Jehovah. <laughs> come on, come on, somebody. Let's appreciate him. Tell your neighbor, it is your choice. 
We said, write five things. That's our choice. Three months, God will make it happen. Somebody told me, Ma Ambrose, you, you told us five things. Me, I wrote ten. <laughs> what is these five things? <laughs> I said, by the way, five is not restrictive. At least it's a beginning. So, the guy said, me, I remember, ah, me ten. Kwanza, me, I have many things I need to happen. <laughs> so, if you have gone beyond five, you have not sinned. Hello? Just keep adding because your faith is rising. And I think after this service, you're saying, Allah, I'm going to add more. Take your portion. Amen? I'll talk about the last point next week, but I believe the word God wanted downloaded has come. Next week, we shall celebrate birthdays and uh, we shall have a few cakes. So tell your neighbor, Kuna Keki next week. So, how many of you were born in January? Okay, January are here. Who, is, who said October? <laughs> Why are you saying October? Oh, we didn't get a cake for October last year. Who, who are the Octobers? Okay. Okay. Please tell your neighbor, walk in the land of possibilities. <laughs> you have just forgotten this message. Possibilities. So we'll, we'll see if we can get a cake for January and October. And then we shall have November. Okay? We'll do all that. And December. Okay, so your time will come. Tell your neighbor your time will come. Okay. Deacon Joe, you were saying something? August, I was on leave. <laughs> so you didn't eat any cake in August? Where, well, Joe? <laughs> all right. So pray that we'll get all those cakes. And because we are walking in the land of possibilities. So tell your neighbor tonight, you're walking into your possibilities. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. Those who visited us, thank you for coming. Please come again. Wednesday we usually have fun and we have a good time. We also have a cup of tea. So tell your neighbor, there's a cup of tea. Is water tea? Is tea water? Okay. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Is that a good key? We change the key? Okay, give me a good key. Ha hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. One more time. Hallelujah. Thine the glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thine the glory. Revive us again. Let's pray. Father, tonight we were talking about ever increasing faith is a choice. It is a choice to believe God. It is a choice to change location. Thinking the right thoughts that move us from being defeated to becoming victorious. A choice to move forward into the land of possibilities. 
a choice to take a hold of the inheritance that is ours tonight i believe father that the faith has just been ignited in somebody somebody is now seeing possibilities instead of the impossibility yes they may still exist but lord we declare it is a mirage the reality is that possibilities were created for us why because we live in your kingdom the bible says seek ye first the kingdom of god the kingdom of god is where possibilities happen and when mary said let it be unto me according to your word she stepped into your kingdom where the impossible becomes possible dear lord relocate us change help us to change the way we think some of us we need to delete 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 and create space for a new way of thinking how we think about prosperity how we think about success how we think about our walk with god how we think about living a righteous life lord help us to start thinking anew instead of thinking the old way you said in 2019 behold i do a new thing now it springs up do you not perceive it and then you said i am making a way tonight lord you are making a way for a brother here you're making a way for a sister here you're making a way for a mother here you're making a way where there seemed to be no way because somebody has just chosen to believe you the disciples stubbornly did not believe even though you are standing in their midst alive and yet you trusted them with the gospel message tonight i pray that my brothers and sisters will trust the word i've spoken just like mary magdalene who said and came and said he is risen the lord my brothers will go out and say pastor said your reason we believe it and not just because pastor said it the word of god it is written that he rose from the dead write the vision down that those who read it may run with it for though it tarry it will surely speak at the end my god i am making a choice in 2019 to believe god to believe in possibilities to believe and make a choice that you are not a man that you should lie that what you said you will do in 2019 i'm going to the next level in 2019 new doors are opening for me in 2019 i am going to stand out in my ministry in my teaching in my a new anointing is upon my life i know there's a new anointing on god's people right now wherever you are standing my sister and my brother something new is already being prepared for you receive it now take it in your heart god is making a way where there have seemed to be no way i'm speaking to somebody who is in the us some of and some people who are outside the country you may be watching this online and i want to say that some of you out there you have you don't you do not have papers you have been wrestling you went to the to the us or you went to those places without papers and now you're trying to make sure that those papers are set together rightly i want to declare to you that god is going to make a way for you i want to say god is making a way for you you're listening to me from the us or wherever you are and you under the sound of my voice you have heard that you can walk in a land of possibilities yes you may not have started right but god can finish that race for you you can connect with god right now it doesn't matter how you started what matters is how you finish may you finish well may you finish strong may you delete the defeated thoughts may you delete those things that keep coming and tripping you the bible says lay aside every weight and sin that clings so closely and be free to run the race that is set before you looking unto jesus he who began that faith will complete it for you brethren your faith will move you forward 
Your faith is going to accelerate you. Your neighbors will be so astonished when that mountain is cut in half and you are seeing the sunrise. Your testimony is coming. Believe God. Believe this man of God and stand on God's word. You are a winner. You are more than a conqueror. You are unbeatable. You are unstoppable. You are rising to great heights. And there is nothing the devil can do about it. Change your thoughts. Believe God's word. Walk in the land of possibilities. And take hold of your inheritance. This is the word of God. If you believe that, you better say, I receive it. It is my portion. And there's nothing the devil can do about it. If you believe that, now give God a big hand and tell him thank you. <laughs> tell him thank you. Amen. Okay. Amen. Give about three, four people a high five and tell them next week they better show up. Amen. Ah, hata mimi ni high five nimekupatia. Nimepatia huko juu. Huko juu. Amen. The Team Vision book is still available. The card is available. Um, the CD is available. You only have to make what? choice. There's a cup of tea. Choice. Amen. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. And you. Yani you. Just you. The mighty you. The awesome you. You shall dwell in God's favor. In God's safety. In God's, safety. In God's protection. In God's, protection. In, God's in God's provision. All the days of your life. Of your life. And there's nothing the devil can do about it. Amen. 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 Now look at somebody and tell them uh, together as we finish. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Shalom. Have a good night.